Last year, one or two questions were asked in NEET PG on sequence of ECG changes in MI. Let's look at one of the actual questions asked. What is the sequence of ECG changes during myocardial infarction? Now, image A, image B, image C, image D, four images were seen. Let's look at each one of the images. The first image actually shows a hyperacute T wave. So, T wave is elevated. This is the first image. The second image actually shows a ST segment elevation. A proper ST segment elevation is seen in the second image. The third image shows a deep Q wave. And the fourth image shows an inverted T wave. Now, clearly the first, we know from the theory, the first is hyperacute T wave. Then we have the ST segment elevation. Third, we have the Q wave. And fourth, we have the T wave inversion. So the correct sequence would be A, B, C, D. Answer would be answer C, A, B, C, D. Let's look and understand this concept further. So the first change of ECG in MI is hyperacute T wave, which typically happens within 2 to 30 minutes. Now this hyperacute T wave, you can see the T wave has very sharp and very high. It should be differentiated with, with peak T wave as seen in hyperkalemia. So this both may look very similar, but if you see peak T wave, they are more taller and narrower. But hyperacute T wave are not as that tall, but they are broader. So you have to learn to differentiate between hyperacute T wave and peak T wave. Peak T wave is seen in hyperkalemia. Hyperacute T wave is the first manifestation of ECG change in MI, which typically happens between 2 to 30 minutes. The next change is segment st segment elevation which happens in the first few hours so clearly this is the isoelectric line we have a proper st segment elevation the next change would be a pathological q wave which typically happens within 24 hours so the pathological q wave does not happen immediately but if the uh, mi has been more than 24 hours then a pathological q deep pathological q wave will be seen and finally the T wave inversion, which again happens around 24 hours after the event. Now, you have to realize that this pathological Q wave and inverted T wave may be a persistent feature. So, they may persist even after the acute MI is over. But persistent ST elevation is rare. Persistent ST elevation is rare except in the presence of ventricular erosion, aneurysm. So, Persistent ST elevation, if seen in an ACG, should point towards a diagnosis of ventricular aneurysm. So here in this lecture, we have seen the progression of ECG changes in acute MI, where first we see hyperacute T wave, which has to be differentiated from peak T wave. Then we see ST segment elevation, pathological Q wave, and finally inverted T wave.